Amen. Ba'im at Zedai Mignato Asher Lo Mi Zedai Achuzato Yagdish Ladonai Vechishav Lo Hakohen Et Mirsat Harkecha Ad Shena Hayovel Venatan et Hayarkecha Bayom Hahu Kodesh Ladonai Bishnat Hayovel Yashuv Hasade La Asher Kanahu Meito La Asher Lo Achuzat Haaretz Vechol Erkecha Yihye Beshekel HaKodesh Esrim Geira Yihye HaShakel Baruch HaTor Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher notan lanu Torah Sames Vachaye Olam nota Besocheinu Baruch HaTor Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Yamod Adonai Oben Eshayahu Shavii'a Torah reading continues on page 549 verse 26 Baruch Adonai Amorach, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ami, Benatan Lanu Et Torto, Baruch Adonai Notena Torah. Amen. Ach Bechor, Asher Yevukar Ladonai, Yakdish ish oto im shor im sa ladonai hu ba im ba be he ma hatame a ufa da be er kecha ba yasaf chamishito a love ba im lo yigal ba nim kar ba er kecha ach kol che. Asher Yacharim Ish Ladonai Mikol Asher Lo Mei Adam Ufeima Umisade Yachuzato Lo Yimacher Velo Yigael Kol Cherem Kodesh Kodashim Hu Ladonai
Amen. Kocheram. Asher. Yachoram. Min Hadam. Lo Yipadam. Mot Yumat. Vichomasar. Haaret. Misera. Ha aret mi peri ha eis la donai hu kodesh la donai vi im ga ol yig al ish mi ma asro chamishito yo safe a love. Beho masar bakar vatan kol asher ya avor tahat hashavet ha asiri yihia kodesh la donai lo yeva ker ben tov. La ra ve lo yami renu ve im hamer yami renu ve hayahu ut murato yihia kodesh lo yiga el ele hamitvot. Asher Tziva Adonai Et Moshe El Bnei Yisrael Behar Sinai Amen. Please rise Bagala, bagala, ubizman kari vimeru, amen. Yehesh me rava me vorak, leolam lo me amaya. Yit barach, 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 Tahamod, 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 Abachur Abat Mitzvah, Yehudit Yisrael Agereshon Abat Oren Veriva Maftir, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Elam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Venatan Lanu Et Torah Tov Baruch Adonai Noten Torah Amen Vecho Masar Pakar Vatan Kol Asher Yavor Tachat Hashavet 
Asiri yihi akodash la donai lo yavaker bain tov la ra velo yamiranu vaim hamer yamiranu vehayahu utmarato yihi akodash lo yigal. Ela Hamid's word, I shared Siva Adonai at Moshe El Ben Israel Behar Sinai. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Atemet Vechayei Olam Nata Betocheinu Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen Barchu et Adonai Ham Vorach, Baruch Adonai Ham Vorach, Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam, Asher Bachar Banu, Mikol Hamim, Benatan Lanu, Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Vechomasar, Bakar, Vatan, Kol Asher Ya'avor, Tachat HaShavet HaAsiri. Yihi Kodesh La Donai Lo Yevaker Bain Tov La Ra Velo Yami Renu Ve Im Hamer Yami Renu Ve Hayahu Utmurato Yihia Kodesh Lo Yiga El Ele Hamid Vot Asher Tiva Adonai Et Moshe El Bene Israel Behar Sinai. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vichaye Olam Nata Betocheinu Baruch Anta Adonai, Notein HaTorah. Please rise for the lifting and tying of the Sefer Torah. Bezot HaTorah Asher Samoshe Vitei Vnei Yisrael Yadonai V'yad Moshe You may be seated. The Haftarah that will be chanted by our Banot Mitzvah beginning on page 551. Baruch Atah 
Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Minvim Tovim Feratza Vedivreham Hanemarim Be'emet Baruch Ata Adonai Habocher Batorah Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amo Uv Inviye Ha'emet Fatzedek Adonai Uzi Uma Uzi Um Nusi Beyom Tara Elecha Goyim Yavou Me of Se Aret Veyom Ru Ach Sheker Nachalu Avotinu Hevel Vein Bam Mo'il Hayase Lo Adam Elohim Vehem Alo Elohim Lachain Hineni Modiam Bapam Hazot Odiem Et yadi ve et gevurati ve yad u kish mianonai chatat Yehuda ketuva be eight barzel beti poren shamir charusha alu achlibam. Ule karnot mis pechotechem, kiz kor benehem mis pechotam, va asherehem al eit ra'anan, al yevaot hagvohot, harari basade chilcha chol otrotecha. Lavaz etein Bamotecha Bechatat Bechol Gevulecha Veshamateta Uvecha Minachalatcha Asher Natati Lach Vahavadeticha Et Oi Vecha Ba'aretz asher lo yadata Ki eish kedachtem be'api ad olam tukad Ko amar Adonai Aruar hagever asher yivtach badam Vesam basar zero'o u'min Adonai Yasur Libo Vehaya Kear Arbarava Velo Yere Kiavoto Veshachan Chorevim Bamidbar Eret Melecha Velo Teshev Baruch HaGever Asher Yivtach Badonai Vehaya Adonai Mivtacho Vehaya Keit Shatul Al Maim Vayival Yashalach Shorashav Velo Yireh Ki Avochum Vehaya Aleihu Ra'anan Uvishna Patsure Lo Yirag Velo Yamish Masot Peri 
Sameach Sayon Bevaneha Samhainu Adonai Elohainu Beliahu Hanavi of Decha Umahu Beit David Meshikha Bimheira Yavo Veya Gali Benu Alkiso Loya Shevzar Velo in Halu or a Hirim at Kevodo Kivashen Kochahanish Batalo Jaluch Bene Roll El Lampad Baruch Adonai Magain David Al Hatura Vel Havoda Vel Hanevim Vel Yom Hashabat Hazah Shanatat Alonu Adonai Eloheinu Likdu Shavelim Nyecha Lechavod Utifaret Al Hakol Adonai Eloheinu Anachnu Modim Lach Umevarchim Utach it barach shim ha befiko haitami la lambad baru hatadonai ahu aruch shemo mekadesh hashabai amen semen tov mazel tov mazel tov semen tov semen tov mazel tov mazel tov semen tov semen tov mazel tov mazel tov semen tov anu
Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion talks about God's relationship and covenant with the Jewish people. We are told that if we follow God's commandments, we will be rewarded with plentiful food, peace, and security. However, if we disobey God's commandments, we will be punished. We will be conquered and we will suffer with disease and famine, and will even be exiled from the land of Israel. But, even if we are disobedient and punished, we are comforted by the knowledge that God will never forget us or desert us, because God made a covenant with us. We are his chosen people. This message of hope reminds me of relationship between a parent and child. When I listen to my parents and do good things, I am rewarded. When I am disobedient and do bad things, I am punished. But I know my parents will still love me and always be there, just as parents have unconditional love for their children. God has unconditional love for the Jewish people. This unconditional love is a message of hope for us. Throughout the Tanakh, we have seen the Jewish people punished and conquered. Even when we were exiled from the land of Israel, there was still hope that things could always get better. As a part of the Bat Mitzvah program, all of us participated in the Yad Vashem twinning program. I was twinned with a girl named Sophie, who was murdered in Auschwitz. She shared the same birthday as me and the same name as one of my cousins. This year, we learned about the Shoah, which strikes close to me. My bubby is a survivor and all of her family, except for her parents, were murdered. They were just a few of the six million. This makes me wonder. Why did God turn his back on us? But right after the Holocaust came the rebirth of the state of Israel. Israel's national anthem is called the Hoptikva, which means the hope. This is very fitting because as the Parsha says, no matter how bad things get for us, God will never forget us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The the illusion as to why or the rationale perhaps, as to why a bat mitzvah or a bar mitzvah should be celebrated not as a private family moment, but as a communal celebration, is given some life to the opening words of the Torah portion this morning. And that is, all of the blessings that we read, outstanding ones, that are, that are given clearly in the Torah portion for this morning, that there are ten in total. And the ancient rabbis used that idea of these ten blessings as also being the rationale as to why it is ten Jews that form a community. It is ten Jews that form the basis of communal prayer. That if you do not have ten Jews present, there are some prayers you can't say. It is the ten Jews that form the minion. And so Izzy, on this beautiful morning of your bat mitzvah, of all the places in the world that it could be celebrated, on a beach, on a boat, (laughs) in any place in the world that it could be celebrated. Your parents chose it to be here, in the shul, on a Shabbat morning, in the midst of the Jewish community, because that's where we find our blessings. And so on this beautiful morning, surrounded by these beautiful things, Izzy, it is my honor to present to you some gifts on behalf of the congregation to remind you of how to find those beautiful things in your life. I'm going to ask Izzy to go back to her parents who will recite the Bat Mitzvah blessing along with me. I'll ask her parents to stand, please. Izzy, you too. Baruch Sheptorani Shabbat Shalom. Now, explaining things is an art. Walk through any bookstore or perhaps just browse through Amazon, you find that there's no end to how-to books and whatever books for dummies. Come to think of it, there is a Judaism for dummies. There's a Judaism for dummies version 2 and a Kabbalah for dummies as well. Now, I'm going to date myself here a little bit, but that going through high school, one of the supreme gifts was something called Cole's Notes, which were essentially were books written about books. People often wondered why teachers didn't crack down on the using of Cole's Notes to write papers, and that's because they probably realized that for people who didn't like to read, they still had to read. So yes, explaining is a talent. Some are better at it. Students once asked the great physicist, Richard Feynman, if he could explain what existed before the Big Bang. Feynman said, I can't, there was no time. And some are bad at it. 
Just ask any two-year-old. But it's something we learn to do as we grow. So this morning I was faced with a dilemma. The third book of the Torah has been completed and there's something worth explaining about it. It's going to take a little bit of patience because some of this explaining is drawn from information that would come, to, come from an introduction to biblical literature course. To be honest, because of that, I asked myself if we wanted to delve into this. I went back and forth. But I know, because you're members of Beth Shalom Synagogue, that on average we're very smart people. And this is something that's worth knowing. Okay. Now, it's been a long debated subject in traditional rabbinic circles. And by traditional, I mean rabbinic thought dating back about 2,500 years ago as to where the Torah came from. Now, essentially, it broke down into two major schools of thought. The first is what most of us were taught as children, that Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments in one hand and the Torah in the other hand, all of it which is to say that by the time Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, the entire Torah is in his hands, which we call the five books of Moses has already been written. In academic jargon, they have a term for it. It's called TMS, Torah, Moses from Sinai. Now, on the other side of this ancient traditional debate is the idea that the Torah was written over time. And what that means is also debated, but essentially, it's being something that was put together over the course of time. Some say it was 40 years when they wandered in the Sinai Desert. Others suggest it may have even been longer than that. In academic circles today, it is universally understood that the Torah is a few things. Number one, the Torah is incredibly ancient meaning that through the science of linguistic analysis, we know that parts of the Torah date back more than 3,200 years ago. And the other idea is that the Torah is syncretic, meaning that the Torah developed over time, slowly, in a process that stretches not over hundreds of years, but thousands of years. We know this from actual biblical records, but we know it best, and most importantly, from archaeological work. Now, you can understand this best by going to Israel. If you've been there, then I have no doubt that you've been to Masada. Just at the very bottom of Masada is an area which is now a museum called Qumran. It's where the Dead Sea Scrolls are from. Those scrolls now reside in a special section of the Israel Museum called the Shrine of the Book. If you haven't been there next time, you're in Israel, make sure you go, but book a guided tour. Almost everyone has heard buzz about the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the most important thing to know about them is, first of all, they're really old, about 2,000 years ago, and that also they contain copies of our Torah. Most of what is written, 97% of what exists in our Torah today is found in copies of the Dead Sea Scrolls and about 3% is different. And that's kind of a big deal. It's a big deal because if you believe the Torah came down, locked and signed and sealed after 40 days on Mount Sinai, you have a problem. On the other hand, if you believe in the syncretic method that the Torah was woven over the period of many, many centuries, then you're okay. In fact, you're more than okay. You're golden. Today, the smart money is on that the Torah was written in sections, a process which stretched over thousands of years, and that each of these five books of the Torah has a standalone feature to it, saying that each of them were hermetic, self-contained, could be read by themselves without needing to read any of the other books in order to be understood. So try it sometime. Open the book of Exodus and don't read the end of the book of Genesis. Or open up the book of Deuteronomy without reading the book of Numbers. It works really well. And by the way, it's a pretty awesome read too. Which brings me to this morning. On this Shabbat, we enter the third book of the Torah, Sefer Vayikra, Leviticus. 
Tradition suggests that it was a handbook that was used by the priests running the temple services in ancient times, and this is how it ends. Ela ha mitzvot asher tziva Hashemet Moshe el b'nei Yisrael b'har Sinai. That these are the commandments that God gave Moses to the Israelite people on Mount Sinai. Which only becomes something more remarkable when you think about how the stories in the Western world, how those stories end. Think about the movies and TV shows that you watch. Think about the books that you read or, or have had read to you as a child. And then think about how the overwhelming majority of those books and those movies and those TV shows do a few things. Number one, they want to make you happy. That's why we have happy endings. The second thing they want to do is to help you make sense of the world so that you feel safe. That's why you have people riding off into the sunset. It's why you have the good guys winning and the bad guys losing that no matter how messy the story might be, that we want to wrap everything up in a nice, neat package so that in hindsight, you can see a beginning, middle, and end. We want to see the story that uplifts us and that inspires hope in us. And above all else, it must make sense to us. For example, in Don Quixote, Cervantes has it that at the end, Quixote realizes the epiphany that all of his dreams were foolish. At the end of King Lear, Shakespeare has Lear and Cordelia falling in love again. They're reunited. At the end of F. Scott Fitzgerald's monumental book, The Great Gatsby, Nick Carraway is given this remarkable insight into human life. We want epiphanies. We want moments of grace. And we want to see people saved. Stories with definitive endings don't necessarily reflect the belief that the world makes sense. But they do reflect the belief in the power of art to make sense. But to know the Torah is to know that we seldom have such moments. No sweeping insights into human life. No grand epiphanies. No one being saved. Just an end. What you find in Jewish storytelling is something that is really different. A kind of realism that comes from humility, from the knowledge that one cannot be true to the human experience while pretending to make sense of the world. It is accepting that most of the world and life that we live in does not make sense, ever. That life can be hard and it can be cruel. Even the most ideal and hopeful will end up wondering. There is and never will be a grand unifying existence to human existence, at least according to Judaism. What we find in the Torah and in Judaism are stories about human limitations, which means that our stories are not endings, but always beginnings. The beginning of the search for meaning rather than the end. The Torah and Judaism are filled with stories, not with conclusions, but full of endurance and resilience. We end this third book with our people not saved, but still wandering. We conclude this text not with an idea of how it will end, but that it will continue. The Israelites have not gotten to the land of Israel, and they are not in their homes. They are still torn and weathered and confused and shell-shocked from their transformation from slaves to free people and nomads. The gift the Torah has given to the Jews, and by extension the Jews to the rest of the world, is that to persist and to endure is the best answer of any story. That there may be no better answer than knowing that we are still here, that our message survives, that the messenger, us, is faithful and we will not let go of it. It is the belief that the greatest victories in this world are the moral victories, and that the greatest accounting of success or failure is not a tally of raw numbers, but of something much deeper. The great Jewish historian Simon Dubnov, when facing his imminent death, and not only his, 
but of everyone who was with him in the Riga ghetto during the Second World War, told his people, Jews, write it all down. We know that the Jews during the Shoah, while hiding in bunkers from the Nazis, scratched their names onto walls. They wrote invisible messages in urine. They buried manuscripts in cans beneath streets and under trees so that one day it was the hope, not that there would be a happy ending, but that their names and their lives might be remembered. In other words, it was the hope that we would endure and exist and continue. Shabbat Shalom. In Kelo Hainu, in Kado Nainu, in Kemal Kainu, in Kemoshi Yainu, Mi Kelo Hainu, Mi Kado Nainu, Mi Kemal Kainu, Mi Kemoshi Yainu, No de Lelo Hainu, No de La Donainu, No de Lemal Kainu, no de la moshienu, Baruch Eloheinu, Baruch Adonainu, Baruch Mokainu, Baruch Moshienu, Atahu Eloheinu, Atahu Adonainu, Atahu Mokainu, Atahu Moshienu, Atahu. Shihiktiru avotenu lefanecha et ketoret hasamim. Please rise, page 428. Should I start? Alenu la don hakol. Teketu la leot ser bereshit, Shelo asanu kegoe haratsot, Velo samanu kemishbechot hadama, Shelo sam helkenu kahem, Vegora lenu kehol hamona, Vanach nu korim, Umishtahavim umodim. Lifne Melech Malche Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruchu. The Nemar Vehaya Adonai Lemelech Al Kol Haaretz. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu, ye Adonai echad. Ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. You may be seated. With reverence, we now remember these lives and the approaching anniversary of their passing. Frida Altfest. Samuel Arbus, Rebecca Bernstein, Lily Bloom, Beryl Cohen, Sheila Diamond, Saul Illman, Lila Fisherman, Max Godlist, Rose Gottlieb, Lola Harlang, Helen Herson, Bella Horowitz, Myra Kammerman, Max Katz, Hannah Katz, Louis Keston, Eva Kimmel, Rose Kirsch, Louis Kirsch, Joseph Kirschenblatt, Joseph Levy, Abe Lipman, Daniel Newman, Diane Novak, Sidney Rako, Mary Rappaport, David Rodness, Marilyn Rosenblum, Ruth Rosenstein, Anne Rottenberg, Mary Schwartz, Theodore Sherman, Louis Supkos, Avraham Thier, and Howard Weinberg, Samuel Rubichnik, Nelly Shulman, Asha Vigler, and Barbara Weintraub. May the souls of our loved ones continue to be bound up in the bonds of life eternal. The Martyrs Kaddish can now be found on page 434. Yit Gadal vi Yit Kaddash Shemei Rabbah, vi Alama di Varachi Rute, vi Amalich Machute. Vechaye Chon of Yomechon, Vechaye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Vagalao Vizaman Karivi Meru Amen, Yehesh Me Rabam of Orach, the Olam Ulame Maya, Yit Barach Vish Tabach, Vit Pervi Komambi Nase, 
v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shemeid kudusha berichu v'yela min ko birchata v'shirata tush bechata v'nechemata da'amiran bi'alama v'imru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'yal ko yisrael v'imru amen ose shalom bimramav hu ya'ase shalom aleinu v'yal ko yisrael v'imru amen you may be seated. It is my honor to call upon our synagogue's president, Mr. David Krieger, for a few brief announcements. Big Beth Shalom, uh, Shabbat Shalom to all of you here. If you're a member or guest visiting or streaming, welcome to our service. A big Yeshua Koach to Rabbi Flansreich, Chazen Moses, and Jeff Green for leading services, and all for the prayer readers today who did a beautiful job. And of course, to our B'nai Mitzvah, uh, both uh, uh, Olivia and Izzy, you guys did great, and you should be very proud of yourself. Um, I want to uh, give, of course, a big muzzle tov to Anthony and Lisa Rosenberg on the bat mitzvah of uh, the daughter Olivia, uh, grandfather of Meyer and uh, Michelle Katz and Howard Rosenberg. Fondly remembered at this time are Helen Rosenberg, Jane and Israel Katz, Wolf and Frida Katz, Martin and Bella Rosenberg, and Irvin and Goldie Hartsman. Aloha shalom. And of course, to Randy Rose and Oren Sherman uh, Zussman on the bat mitzvah of their daughter Izzy. Uh, I understand Zoe, younger sister of Zoe, and Zoe's here. A proud grandmother is Clara Rose, fondly remembered at this time are Erwin Rose, Jack, and Ilta Boijum, and David Rose, and David Rose. Uh, love of a shalom. I want to uh, thank. Uh, uh, Lisa and Anthony Rosenberg for sponsoring Kiddish, as well as uh, uh, Randy Rose and Oren Zussman for sponsoring Kiddish, and for uh, the Kimmel family for enhancing the sponsored Kiddish this Shabbos in memory of Eva Kimmel. Aleva of Shalom. I want to uh, also uh, refer you to our website and also to our brochure. There is a slew of programming, way too much to mention, uh, but one absolutely worthy today is to congratulate Lisa Ehrlich Flansreich. The, Rabbi's wife, who's been announced as an honoree at the upcoming Restoring Hope event for her outstanding commitment to Chai Lifeline. This event is at Roy Thompson Hall on June 20th and features Grammy Award winning musicians Michael Bolton and Kenny G. Uh, please uh, check the link in our bulletin uh, to connect and uh, purchase tickets. With that, I want to uh, tell you that uh, I mentioned the Kiddush Shabbos. Uh, guests of, uh, of uh, Randy and Oren are invited downstairs to the uh, banquet hall for, uh, serve for lunch immediately after services. With that, I'm going to ask you all to rise for the Kiddush that can be found on page 442. Adon olam asher malach Beterem kol yatsir nivra Laet nasa bechef sokol Azai melech shemo nikra Ve'acharei kichlot akol Levado imloch nora Vehu haya, vehu hove, vehu yihye betifara, vehu echad vein chani. Laham shilo lechach bira, beli reshi, beli tachli, velo haoz veha misra, vehu eli, vechai goeli. Vetsur cheli beit sara, vehu nisi umanosli. Menat kosi beyomekra beyado afkiruchi beydishan veayira veimruchi geviati adona 